So recently I made the big jump to go tubeless on several of our bikes after much cajoling from uh, some readers and some viewers on YouTube. And although I love the benefits of tubeless, I have to say it was not as easy as some people made it out to be. So in this video, I'm gonna show you all the problems I ran into, all the foibles, all the mistakes. Uh, hopefully you won't do the same. It'll make your transition into tubeless easier. Welcome back Pathless Peddlers, and if you're new to the channel, if you're looking for information and inspiration around bike travel, bike touring, bike packing, and bike fishing, then definitely subscribe, this channel is for you. So I'm a bit of a retro grouch when it comes to uh, some bike gear. You know, I'm of that philosophy of if it ain't broke, why fix it? But recently I've extended beyond my retro grouch bounds and have embraced tubeless but man, it was a pain in the butt to do. So talking to friends and looking online, they make it look so easy. Just wrap some tape, put a bunch of sealant in there and you're good to go. But I'm here to tell you it's not that easy and I made a ton of mistakes in converting uh, our bikes into tubeless. So these are six things I learned while going tubeless. Um, most of them are mistakes, but hopefully it'll save you guys the trouble when you guys go tubeless, if you guys go tubeless. So the thing I learned, number one, is remove your pre-existing rim tape. I know this is gonna be obvious to all the seasoned mechanics out there, but uh, to my newbie thinking, I thought more tape, more better, right? But if you already have tape on your rim, Velox or whatever came on your wheel, if you put tubeless tape on top of that tape, it's gonna prevent it from uh, creating a really airtight seal and you're just not gonna be able to seat the tire. So thing number two I learned in this whole process is you've really got to tape it good. I, I would say about 90% of going tubeless is doing a good tape job. And it took me countless rolls of tape to figure out uh, what this meant exactly. So unlike applying Velox where the adhesive is usually strong enough to uh, create a good bond with the rim, when you apply something like Stan's rim tape, you really have to stretch it out as you apply it. And you know you're doing it right if you hear that snapping sound. You've also got to pay lots of attention to make sure that there aren't any air bubbles at all uh, while you're taping the rim. Thing number three that I learned is that when it's time to put in the Presta valve, you wanna make as small a hole as possible. If you make a giant hole, no amount of sealant is gonna uh, make it airtight. So one of the tips that worked best for me was actually to cut a small X with a knife. This creates an insertion point that is big enough to allow the Presta valve through there, but isn't a big gaping hole that the sealant won't be able to seal. So thing number four that I learned to make the conversion process 50% easier is to actually first insert a tube uh, into your soon to be tubeless setup, inflate it, then deflate it, and then pull the tube out being careful to only remove the bead on one side of the rim. So what this does by inflating the tire with the tube in there is that it fully seats both beads. And then as when you pull the tube out, one bead remains seated. So you only have to worry about one side of the tire to mount well. It is a little bit of an extra step, but if you're using a floor pump and don't have access to a compressor, it'll make the job that much easier. Thing number five that I learned, which I wish I knew at the beginning, was that you could actually dry mount a tubeless tire. And what that means is essentially inflating the tubeless tire on the rim uh, without any sealant. And you would do this to kind of test the compatibility between the tire and the rim without getting messy. To my thinking, I thought you needed a sealant for the whole thing to work, but apparently you can get a pretty good estimation if it's gonna work uh, without any sealant at all. So before you get things messy, definitely try to dry mount the tire to the rim first. And finally, the last thing I learned is you do really have to, to pump vigorously. I kind of underestimated at how much pumping you had to do but after mounting uh, tubeless tires on a, a couple bikes, my, my arms were exhausted. And one bonus thing I learned, especially if you're new to uh, converting to tubeless tires, is buy some extra rim tape. I totally underestimated how much rim tape I was gonna go through because at first I actually did things incorrectly, either taping it wrong or cutting too big of a hole for the valve. So it took me uh, multiple times and more tape than I expected uh, to actually successfully mount the tires. So what I learned at the end of this entire process is that I really didn't save any money by doing it at home. It actually probably would have come out cheaper if I had just dropped the wheels off at a bike shop 
but I did learn a lot in the process. So I feel more confident. So if something goes wrong on the trail or on the road, I'm better equipped to kind of understand and troubleshoot the problem. I will say that there is definitely a learning curve and going tubeless might not be for everybody. Tubes are perfectly fine. And I think when you factor in the costs, I think they might actually come out cheaper, uh, especially if you uh, constantly mess up installing tubeless like I did. So what about you guys? How many of you guys have made the jump to tubeless? How many of you guys are still on the fence because of all these problems that I listed? Do you guys have any other tips for newbies that are going to go tubeless? If you like the video, you know what to do. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to support more original bikey content uh, like this, and definitely check out our little microfunding link below. For as little as three bucks a month, you can help keep the lights on. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.